Hello, thank you for joining me. Happy New Year. This is my first video of 2021. I've come out for driving my larder. As you can see, we have come to a railway. We've come to the Northampton and Lamport Railway, which is about five miles north of Northampton. I last came here in 2002, so it's a bit different from when I last came. Um, there's a couple of uh, frames of steam locomotives here. I think one of them is a Great Western Railway Hall, um, but it's more of a diesel day today, although um, we should see, see a couple of steam locos which are here. So I'm going to walk out the car park, we're going to go and have a look at Pittsford and Brampton station, which is currently the only station on this little railway. Um, as I say, I last visited here in 2002 when I was a child and they had a DMU running, which I believe has now gone to the Struss Bay Railway. So um, it will definitely be a different train. I can hear a diesel ticking over, so we're probably, we're, well, I, I know we're getting a diesel haul train because that's what it said. I booked the tickets online the other day and it said it'd be a diesel haul train, so I already know that. Um, anyway, so there's a pub there called Brampton Halt. Um, Pittsford and Brampton Station is situated halfway between the villages of Chapel Brampton that way and somewhere up the hill, Pittsford. So here's the station. The original station buildings unfortunately have been demolished, um, but there's some newer ones which have come from our places as a very midland looking signal box up there. So we'll have to go and have a look at that. And um, let's have a look. So there's a train in front of us now. So that's probably our train, Mark II coaching stock. So I yeah, can hear the ticking over of the diesel. And then looking down that way, I can see the carriages and everything. Let's go and have a look, see what our loco is for today. Um, it's going to be a winning loco for me, I know that, because I've not had any of the locos here. So that's the um, original signal box just there. So that's the one part of the station that is original. Here we are, it's class 31. It's called Phoenix. Let's have a look. Thirty-one. Built by Brush in 1961. So that's our train. Looking up the line that way, I can see a class 33, 47, some Mark 3 carriages. There's another Mark 3 carriage just here, which is also the buffet. So I think um, pretty good time to go and get a cup of tea before I go for a ride on the train. So I'm sat here at the northern end of the line, giving me a glass of sherry. So when I get off the train, I have to go for a bit of a walk to walk it off before driving home. Also got a mince pie, which I'm going to eat as soon as I've finished this clip. So I'll just show you a couple of things. This is the interior of our Mark II carriage, nicely decorated for Christmas. If you look out there, that's looking back towards Pittsford and Brampton. And you can see as far as the line goes on that side. may just be able to see there's a bridge beyond the loco so it seems they've got to um, restore that bridge before trains can continue. So the loco's taken us out of the station north where they're going to reverse back down to the other end of the line see what we see there. My plan is once we've done that I'm going to go for a walk down that way. Um, I'll come for a walk this way possibly not all the way but see what time is. I'll have to walk off that sherry though so um, it, we're going yeah we're going back now so we're going to now um, enjoy the Northamptonshire scenery heading that way. So 
we've come as far south as we're going to come. There's, it's hard to see from here, but there's actually a viaduct. And we might be able to show you on this side of the train. Let's see if you can see. So, um, well, basically there is a viaduct, a very low viaduct, just beyond the train. It's starting to rain now. If you have a look over there, you might be able to see the river. I believe that's the River Neen, so um, another Neen Valley Railway. There's a viaduct down there which um, takes railway over a tributary and a bit of a floodplain. It's a very low viaduct. My plan is, when we've had this train ride, we'll walk down there and um, see what we can see of it. But right now, we're waiting for our thrash behind the 31 back up to the other end of the line, and then it reverses back to the railway station. Just come across the crossing from the railway station, looking south towards Northampton. We'll go down there, we'll go down there next. Just looking north, it's quite good here to get a nice view of the railway station itself. Um, the train's gone off on another journey, so the train's up there now, which we might see it come back past. But if we go up here, what's good is you get a really good view of some of the other locos and rolling stock. Um, you know, it's basically you pass the sidings, so we'll have a wander up here. Get a nice view of the station so there probably would have been another platform here so as for the railway itself this line originally ran from northampton to market harborough it opened in 1858 pittsford and brampton station was added a year later in 1859 station closed in 1950 but the line itself hung on until 1981 so it's fairly recent in terms of closure Certainly closed way after Beach in Zira, although, as I said, the passenger, local passenger service had already gone um, quite a long time before. It was then, you know, when railways closed, the idea of preservation comes along. In 1995, they ran their first train. In 1996, they had their grand opening. So, as I said earlier, that's the, I believe that's the only original building, single box. So, it's um, relatively newcomer to the preservation scene. It is expanding, plans to extend both ways. Some, one of their more recent acquisitions is this uh, Mark III buffet car. It's actually one of a few Mark III carriages. So it doesn't seem long ago, only a couple of years ago. Well, yeah, it was um, 2020 they finished. So 2019, I was still riding these up and down to Norwich. Um, loads of video, video, older videos on my channel of them at Norwich. Um, what I never saw at Norwich was one being hauled by a pannier tank. Um, saw them being hauled by class 90s um, but yeah sorry a pannier tank saddle tank never did i see one well or a pannier tank for that matter uh, little packets a bit um incongruous really isn't it seeing they go together the way they're seeing that um but yeah maybe i have to come back another day have a ride behind that there's a shed there there is another steam loco in the shed another industrial steam loco you might just be able to see that see that there just in the shed doors there's also industrial diesel have a look at that but if we wander up here, we will find a couple more diesels. Um, we have, well, and more Mark III carriages. So what have we got? We've got Class 33, or Crompton as they're known as. I've had loads of Class 33s for all these. It seemed at one point, every time I went to a Heritage Rail on a diesel day, I ended up getting a Class 33 for haulage. Um, today, obviously, I've got a Class 31 winning loco for haulage, so very happy with that. 
that 31 was at the Spa Valley Railway though um, for quite a while, so I knew I'd seen her before, couldn't remember until I looked up on my notes. So it's 33053 and uh, class 47, 47205. And then there's um, a Mark 1 carriage, not a passenger carriage. And there's uh, another um, Mark 3 carriage, an ex Anglis set. Of course, these, these carriages would have been used on the West Coast Main Line before the Pendolinos replaced them. They were displaced, ended up working the trains out of Norwich. Um, and then they have more recently been displaced by the Stadler Flirt units. So uh, I, it's a shame to sort of see them finish mainline service but you know they did so many miles so it's good to see quite a few of them have earned their place in preservation so yeah another loco hauled mark free carriage and then there's a few more of them in the next siding and uh well i'll show you what else we have to see so there's a few sidings here and um, there's actually yeah that technically that could be used as a run round loop because at the moment the the way it runs is that the loco's at one end and they have like a guard stroke driver at the other who basically communicates with the driver. Um, so there's no run round loops at either end, although what we'll do, I believe they are building one at the other end of the line, which we'll see when we get there. Is that the train coming back? I believe it is. There's a river here. I think this is the river, not this is the River Neen, but the other river is River Neen. Obviously this isn't the Neen Valley Railway, but it's another Neen Valley Railway. Anyway. Let's watch the train go past. So as the class 31 propels the train back to the station, um, we're going to continue. I want to show you what's in this siding. There's a signal there. Line is fully signalled. The signal did. If I'd been a bit further on, you'd have seen the signal arm um, drop back to danger. But um, I was only there. So here, just up here in this siding, we have a few more Mark III carriages. Seems really funny though to me. I think seeing these in preservation because I'm, you know, so used to them. I never travelled on them on the West Coast Mainliners. Um, I, it was, you know, I didn't really ever travel on long distance trains much. It was I first travelled on them on the um, great on the line uh, West East Anglian Mainline to Norwich, uh, and then when I started travelling on the West Coast Mainline, I've only ever done it on Pendolinos or other commuter trains. And then here is one of the DVTs. So I'll tell you what I do think it really feels strange is seeing anything with a sloped front on heritage lines. I've been to a few other heritage lines lately and there'll be like an HST power car. And that, I think, just feels funny. I mean, it's great. I'm glad to see them in preservation, but it just seems strange to think we've come to the point now where stuff I remember in use as a child is now in preservation. So, um, seeing as we've come this far, I didn't realise I wasn't going to walk to the buffer stops. I probably still won't, but there's a bridge here. Let's have a look at this this bridge. Is this, uh, I think this is like more like a girder bridge. Um, and I believe this is the River Neen. Down the other end, when we were on the train, we saw there was a viaduct. So we've got to go and have a look at that, I think. So, uh, yeah, well, it's flowing that way. Unless I've just got it in my head, it's the River Neen and it isn't. Um, but I know the River Neen does flow this way. So, yeah, there's a river and we're on a bridge. So, yeah, the railway car is on that way. Um, I'm going to go down the other end and see what we can see down that end of the line. I've just 
just walked up here to the southern end of the railway, that's the southern buffer stop, um, and there's the new station which we're in the process of opening. Just over there, we'll go and have a look at that. The railway did continue across where those traffic lights are. You can follow it as a path down into Milton Keynes, along the old railway track bed, but that is very much a video for another day. But what we've come down here mainly to see is um, the bit of the line that we didn't travel on because they're still working on this southern extension. So this is the new Morton Crossing station here. So the bay platform is quite a long platform, so I'm very much looking forward to this opening. It'll probably happen in the next, um, well, they say the next year. We'll have to wait and see. I'm thinking possibly when it does happen, it'll be a bit of a walk. I might come by train and um, walk, if it's a nice day, walk up the old track bed to catch a train here. So as you can see, that's the new railway station. You can see across the valley over there. Um, there's some other sidings and that. So I saw it all as I walked down and some from the train. Um, so I can point out a few things along the line. Easier to point out from the line than from the train. Cause it's quite good here. The fact that the track was once double um, and now it's single. There is this cycleway. It's um, nice that the cycleway can be here as well as the railway because sometimes it's very much one or the other. So it's very good for line siding here. So what I'm going to do, keep walking. I'll show you a few things up there and we'll keep heading back towards the station. Now walk down to the other end of the new platform. There's a few things to see up here, various semaphore signals. There's also like a works train. There are some people actively at work on the extension, getting it ready for when it reopens. And um, there's also a viaduct up here, which is quite a low viaduct, but quite a nice thing to see. There's some other semaphore signals. So um, I want to have a look at the viaduct which requires some work before uh, passenger trains can run over it, but that is also something that's going to happen. So people who live here will soon have um, Heritage Rail at the end. They've got what they already have, just that um, there's not really any passenger trains. So if we look here, you can see, um, see some people in orange clothing. They're obviously working on the extension. There's the new signal and signal box, nice lattice post signal. It looks like a brand new signal box. The one at Pitts from Brampton, I believe, is original, but this one is new. There's also another one further along, which is, I'll talk about when we get there. So that's your new signal box. There's also some sidings going into there. So it looks like they've got a little permanent way depot. And then here, parked here, is the works train. And there's also another diesel loco. So we'll have a look at that. And we keep walking um, back to... The railway station and see what else we can see. So you can just see that's the permanent way depot in there. Not a lot to see I know. Um, we're just coming to the to the um, works train here. It's got a little industrial diesel loco. Not too knowledgeable on industrial diesel locos because there's just so many. And we'll have a look. That looks like that's a big old mill over there. Beside the line, there's a lot of equine places. Um, lots of horses. Smells of horses around here. So, yeah, horses and trains. Here we have a locomotive. A Ruston and Hornsby and diesel shunter. So, I'm going to leave the loco here and walk back to the station and show you a couple of things on the way. come a couple of hundred yards up from the station where we were, the new station, coming up to Pittsford siding. So we're going very slightly uphill, uh, an uphill gradient of 1 in 204. So it's not exactly a steep hill, but still a hill. When we get to the siding up there, you'll be able to see what's level and what's the gradient. But this is the viaduct. So obviously this there have been two tracks, as I mentioned earlier. We go down here have a look at the viaduct. So it's a very, very low viaduct, really just covering a floodplain. That's actually supposed to come down here, but anyway. So, yeah, see how low the arches are? But I'm taller than them. There's a stream up here. I'm wondering if I can jump across the stream. If not, I'm going to have to go back because I want to get back to the station. Time to watch the next train go. So, and um, see how the viaduct is held together. These metal braces pull it all together. Right, now here's this stream. Now if I can't get 
over the stream. I'm going to have to run back. Yeah, it does look a bit. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm not. I'm not jumping across that. So I wanted to go up those steps. So I'm going to have to go back there to get back to the railway station. So I had to come back, run over the viaduct. I'm now on this side. That's why I couldn't quite jump across. So there's the viaduct. Got to head north and get to the Pittsford sidings. Just here, see some wagons. So if you look, that's level. The line's dropping down towards Northampton. Now the um, interesting thing there was here, there was once a big quarry. Northamptonshire area is very well known for its ironstone. There's various other heritage railways which have links to ironstone in the area. Um, we'll have to visit them in the future. But there was a branch. I, I really had no idea it was there until I, until I got here today. Um, but there was a branch out into those fields which um, little industrial tank engines would have worked. See wagons like this one here, this grey one, that's an iron ore wagon. They would have worked, lots of them, bringing the iron ore out of the earth and to various other places. Nice semaphore signal. And you've also got, it's quite nice seeing the um, telegraph wires running beside the line. Very much a scene from former times when they would have communicated with you know each signal box. Um, so there's a signal box just up here. As you can see, we're gradually going to be the same level as the siding. This one, I believe, came from Wolverton Works. It's not the original signal box on the site, but it's been nicely restored. Um, and then further up here, the, um, the path moves to the other side of the railway. Because um, you may have noticed when we're at the station, the railway platform was against the rail here. So yeah, the footpath just um, south of the station bridge moves to the other side. So we're coming up to Pittsford side and signal box now. And then I'm going to run back to the station and um, go and see the train, probably have a cup of tea. So, um, yeah, what did I say about these Mark III's? I remember travelling on them. I'm sitting inside one now. I'm not going to go anywhere, but um, if you buy a cup of tea from the Mark I carriage just over there, there's nowhere to sit in there, so you have to come in here and sit and drink it. So I've just had a cup of tea. What I'm going to do now, we'll go outside, just show you the interior one of these. So it's really nice. Still got the um, Greater Anglia Moquette. So yeah, still in a Greater Anglia Mark III carriage, even though they've finished. Um, that said, I have been on one, I've been went on some first class ones on the Staycation Express last year. Um, no, it's not last year now, it's um, 2020, because we're in 2022, aren't we? Yeah, have a look at the link on the screen now. Anyway, so yeah, inside a Mark III carriage, what a nice way to end my visit. This is actually a buffet. Um, I probably bought a beer from, from this actual buffet once. So yeah, what I'm gonna do now, I'll just show you one more thing. Outside, there's, um, so that's the carriage. Um, so we'll just go to where, there's a couple of these locos. We saw them from the footpath, but we'll just have another look here. So there's a diesel course at Alfred Wood. And there's the little Peckett um, steam locomotive. So one day we'll have to come back and do this line with steam. Um, we'll go back onto the platform and finally finish the video. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. And um, you know, if you're up this way, 
why not come and have a ride on the Northampton and Lamport Railway? It's a very pleasant little railway. I've had a great time here today. You can do a pleasant walk as well. Nice walk beside the railway, so perfect for line siding. So from Pittsford and Brampton Station, thank you very much for watching. Once again, Happy New Year. Um, and please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. Goodbye.